actually say. The camera's up, okay. so we're gonna go for a tape. Reboot Camp is the story of Seymour and Danny, who are filmmakers who start a fake self-help group so they can document this whole process from within. Love and light. Hey, Love and Light, what, what is that? Why is there, why is there a camera? We, are, we okay. are recording so we may see the growth and then play it back yeah. to teach you. The basic backstory is that Seymour's wife, played by Maxime Roy, got bored while Seymour was working in tech up in Silicon Valley and to kind of appease her, he put her in some self-help seminars. I must have taken a hundred seminars. And then ended up leaving him for one of those fake gurus. And then he gets this idea to do the very thing that lost him his wife, which is to become a self-help guru. Gordon St. Pierre, the spiritual guide, the leader, what do you think? Gordon, Ooh. St. Pierre from Quebec. Danny and David Lipper's character, Seymour are brothers, and they start this camp called the Reboot Camp. It is sort of the perfect metaphor, you know, a computer rebooting, taking away all the viruses. Finding our bliss and all of this stuff, but there's, it's all somewhat nonsensical. They're just doing this so that they can help people no longer believe in these cults that are made by just randos. This new character that Seymour develops will guide them through this process while Danny is shooting the whole thing as a documentary. A fake documentary on, uh, sorry, it's not a fake documentary, it's a real documentary. It's a documentary about a documentary gone bad. A movie inside a movie about a documentary. Comedy, we, we call it a mockumentary. It's a mockumentary of a documentary. You have all kinds of overlays and it's really gonna be fun to watch. And we take it in, excellent. It's a trick, it's an illusion, it's a look inside, behind the curtain. And then it's also kind of letting yeah, you decide how you really feel about it at the end. This is a sleepaway camp for the morons, all right? When I saw the guy in the skirt, and sandals, I knew he was a fraud. Gordon was very nice, and what he had to say made a lot of sense. We are all infected. Yeah. Working with director, writer, Evo Raz has been great. It's just been a lot of fun. When you can get in a room of creative people, the creativity levels go off the charts. You know, Hollywood is a tough town. It's very hard. And uh, you gotta take any advantage you can get. We want a taste of that magic honey, whatever it is. So we have a private session with him wherein we feel like we have grown spiritually. Oh, that was a fantastic oh, yeah. face, Mr. Ja. I'm not happy at all. Oh, that's a good face. Grr. I like it. In this movie, we are doing the most ridiculous physical stuff. But what I've heard is a lot of these exercises that we're doing are actual exercises that take place in these cults. There were a lot of therapy scenes and there was something therapeutic about it. Ah, no, 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 I can't. I can't do the small spaces. One of my favorite characters is this woman, Claire, who kind of infiltrates our camp. Dear Lord, Claire knows from the beginning that it isn't real, yet, she wants to make it real. When Claire comes into the picture, Danny and Seymour's relationship completely flips. I know she's your niece and everything, but if we could please just remove her from the project, she's really messing it up, dude. It's kind of history repeating itself for Seymour to the detriment of his relationship with his brother. You're an actress, right? Why not have the perfect role for yourself? You know, who doesn't want to be at the head of the food chain? <laughs> Are you going to just stand there and resist everything? Because if that's what you're gonna do, you might as well sit down. I just can't look at you. Get up, okay? It was very plausible that she would take over and turn it into a total money-making scheme. Books, events, retreats. It'll fund your future. This movie kind of shows how easy it is to get a little dose in your, in your Kool-Aid and not even realize it until it's too late. We are all sucked into some sort of set of beliefs. And every aspect of the story reflects that in their own way. Everyone can identify with wanting to be better in the world and doing silly things in order to do that. The human brain can be manipulated and fractured and made to do and believe certain things. I think it happens on the regular. Too many people that don't critically think about anything, don't look at anything, just take stuff at surface value. And that to me was an important message. This is a documentary, Seymour. 
It's not real. Get your head straight. The movie does a really good job showing the truth while also not being judgmental. You get to think about that stuff in a, in a lighter way. So maybe it brings it into your consciousness. It's a little more palatable. Why did he get you these? Because he was proving a point. I mean, I look like Nicki Minaj. When I read the scripts, I thought it was hilarious. I think that Gordon St. Pierre is just a character and uh, everybody's gonna love it. It was very intelligent, it was very smart. Search for truth and meaning is something that is a very important part of my life, so that's what drew me to the script. It's a pretty powerful message, if you get it. Great cast, great people, a great director. Everything about it is wonderful, it's a joy. And this group has been sensational. They have slaved away for this movie. True film buffs and enthusiasts came together to do this. I hope it makes you laugh, and I really, really hope people get a kick out of it. He's changed my life. I think it's actually got some of these people.